In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let's greet our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, my friends, um, there's a difference between let's talk about the body and let's talk about your body. As soon as I mention your body, probably you feel, okay, this is personal. Your body, my body, so this is, this is really personal. And, um, and rightly so. If you feel that this is personal, uh, you're on the right track. Yeah, that, that's exactly the idea. Our bodies are very, very personal. Uh, we can see that because there's an inseparable link between body and self-esteem. Self-esteem, which is a very sensitive issue, especially when we are young, as each one of us each one of you are. Um, Self-esteem. Self-esteem is about how you see yourself, how you feel with yourself, what future you uh, envision for yourself. So th this is about self-esteem. And of course, when self-esteem is healthy, you have the possibility of opening opportunities for yourself. But when, when self-esteem is weak or is hard, most probably you feel also weak in life. And um, there are cases, there are cases when people even um, hate themselves. So we have to be careful about self-esteem. And we can see that there is a close link between self-esteem and the body. If you feel, for example, that you are not tall enough, or you are not fit enough, or you are not beautiful enough, probably you feel that you are not enough. And this is one of the horrible feelings that many people have, that I am not enough. Because that, mean, that means that probably I'll be a loser. I'll be a loser in life, because I'm not enough. I'm not up to the task, to the task of getting a partner, to the task of entering in a good relationship with people, and the task of gaining friends, so probably I'm not up to the task. And that's part of the feeling that we could have when self-esteem is hurt, when self-esteem is weak in ourselves. And in many, many cases, believe me, in many cases, this is related to the body. So this means that, that the body is, is something really important, really important. Um, the way you treat your body tells a lot about how you feel about yourself. You know that some people, and we are speaking of this in a, in a very, very compassionate way, some people even uh, hurt themselves which means that they, for example, they cut themselves or, or, or they, they try to destroy. And, and also, we, we cannot forget that this is a time, my friends, this is a time in which many people are considering even um, terminating their lives, killing themselves, and they feel suicidal about themselves. So this is delicate, this is important. And we are here and we have the opportunity of uh, thinking about all this, of course, to make a difference in our lives. Th that's what we want, to, to, to make a difference. And we know that, uh, uh, that our Lord is our best ally, best ally in, in the way of, of moving forward and, uh, and superating some things that are uh, probably more powerful than us, but not more powerful than Jesus' love. So that, that's the, the general scheme of this talk. 
Now, um, what, uh, I, I changed the, 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 the question, how, how are supposed to be our bodies? This is important because self-esteem is connected to the way you are supposed to be. And probably you feel, hey, I don't care about that. Excuse me, you do, you do, you do care about that. About how your body is supposed to be. Uh, I mentioned just a minute ago that some people feel, mm, I should be thinner or taller or uh, um, in, in best way. I'm not in my best uh, way, physically speaking. So we all cared, we all cared about what are we supposed to be. And there is an answer from the world. The world tells us that we are supposed to be healthy and beautiful. We are supposed to be healthy and beautiful. And, and this is good, this is okay, this is good to be healthy, so that health is part of your, your way in the world, that's great. And to be beautiful, well, doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt, it's good to be beautiful. Uh, and probably many, many among us have thought a lot about how to improve our beauty. Uh, now that we are in this gym, we see that many people go to the gym just precisely to get a better, fitter, more beautiful body, which is good, I, 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 I emphasize that. And that's the answer the world gives you, to be healthy and to be beautiful. But now it is me asking, is that enough? So the one thing or the only things that we should care about our bodies is that they are healthy and that they are beautiful? Is that the end of the story? To get an answer, let's turn to the Bible. What is the biblical stance on the body? What does the Bible, says about, does the Bible say about the body? Um, probably some of you, some of you could think, well, the Bible is not mere, very much interested in the body because the uh, uh, Bible, spirituality, religion, prayer, all that is very abstract, that's very remote from our physical and, and bodily experiences. Um, don't agree, I don't agree here, because from the very first book of the Bible, you see the importance of the body. Look, we are told at the very beginning of the Bible that our bodies were formed, formed by God. Well, there's an image. Of course, it is an image. It is a literary image. God's hands were giving shape modeling, forming the human body. And I like that aspect of the Bible because that reminds me that the touch of God is everywhere in your body. So to think of God, probably some people think of God only when being in the church or where I'm serving in the church, or preaching, or doing missionary work. Not necessarily, not necessarily. If you are alone, if you are by yourself, for example, having a shower, you're having a shower, oh, delicious experience, warm and tepid water, pouring from above, and oh, that's great. And, of course, you're naked. Well, everybody, everybody can say, the touch of God 
is every, everywhere in my own body I've been touched. I've been shaped by God's hands. Which means that your body is precious. It's precious. If you go to the Bible, you see, you realize that the only being that was, that was shaped by God's hands was the human body. Only the human body. Birds, oh, they are great and they are beautiful and they are, well, they, 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 they see, they, they look so nice. So nice flying all over the sky. Good. And fish, and sheep, and cattle, and trees. Well, and the forest, and the clouds, and the galaxies. But the only thing that in the Bible is mentioned to be shaped, to be touched by God, is the body. Everywhere in your body, you have the touch of God. And God made you and made me with all he had. His wisdom, his beauty, his care, his love. So my body is an expression, it's a manifestation of God's love. Wow. Think of a work of art. Everybody has heard about the Joconda, the Mona Lisa, the most famous painting probably in the world. It was painted by Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. It's not a big picture. This is a painting like, I suppose, a couple of feet tall. That's all. When you go to this beautiful, in some sense, immortal, work of art, you see that and probably you gain a sense of reverence, reverence. Wow, this is the famous, this is the original, this is the one, this is the one painting, the most famous painting in the world, this is the Mona Lisa. Great. Or you can go to a famous sculpture like the Pietà by Michelangelo. Okay, and you can think, for example, the Pietà. The Pietà is in a sculpture, it is in the, in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. So you, you go, you go there. I, I have had the opportunity to go in there. And you see the people, they, they are having a kind of spiritual experience, a spiritual sense of reverence. And part of that sense comes from the fact that Michelangelo touched every single detail of that most famous sculpture. So the hand of Michelangelo was giving shape to this finger, to this eye, to this, to this part of hair, well, you are a work of art. And the artist was God, is God himself. You're most precious, most precious than the Pietà, or most, more precious than the Gioconda. When you begin to feel that way, immediately your sense of being loved begins growing and growing up from within you, from within you. And that's a body, and that's the Bible. So the Bible speaks, of course, it speaks of the human body. But now let's go to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We note that there's a lot of healing in the Bible. Healing. And what does healing 
mean? Well, giving a hand to a person that is suffering. And what are they suffering from? They're suffering from illness. They're suffering in their bodies. Blind people, deaf people, lepers. Even dead people, like Lazarus. Well, all those are bodily realities. And Jesus heals people. Jesus heals their bodies. I don't know about you, but I have had the experience of praying over a person and that person being cured at the very, the very instant of the prayer. It's something transforming. And I really wish every Christian, every Christian should, should have that kind of experience. To see that a person is being healed just before your eyes. Well, I have seen that. Many years ago, probably this is the closest that I have come to a real healing. We were praying together. That was in Ibagué, a city of Colombia. And there was an, a gathering of the charismatic, Catholic charismatic renewal. And there was adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And if you are like me, sometimes you feel that you are like wasting your time when you are before the Blessed Sacrament. I, don't, I know, I know that it doesn't sound very pious, but sometimes you feel that way. And I have had that, also that feeling. But in that case, we were praying together, we were praising the Lord, we were uh, uh, chanting and proclaiming the greatness of the Lord. And there was a prayer for healing of the sick. I remember very distinctly, there was a man, say like 60, 65 years old, and he had a problem, a problem with his right arm. He was unable to lift it up. He was enabled. There, there was something in, the, uh, in this part. How do you call this part of the body? I forgot. The shoulder, thank you. <laughs> the shoulder. He had a problem with his shoulder. <clears throat> and we were praying. And you know, probably you have seen that style of charismatic uh, prayer and people raising their arms and uh, singing and praising and chanting, well, all that. All of a sudden, this man with the ill shoulder began lifting up his arm and he formerly was unable to do so. So he was healed. It, the Blessed Sacrament was over there it was on a, on a sort of a table, on an altar. And three meters from that was this man lifting step by step his hand. And then he began crying out and very loudly praising the Lord because his arm was healed. So, this is the body and this is a body being transformed, being healed, being healed by God. It's, it's, it's only great. It's only great. So Christ does care about the body. Let me remember with you a very moving passage. This is taken from the Gospel according to Mark chapter 1. A man with leprosy. A man with leprosy came to him, to Christ, and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, 
you can make me clean. His problem was in his body. This particular passage is not mentioning that he was a sinner or that he was um, um, he had difficulties understanding the message of Christ or he has a problem with his prayer life. No, he had a situation and his situation was clearly located in his body. If you are willing, you can make me clean. He reached out his hand and touched the man. He reached out his hand and touched the man, the leper. Jesus reaching out to touch the sick man. If today you feel yourself, if today you feel that you are sick in any sense, in your body, in your mind, in, in your memories, in your emotions, in your faith, I invite you kindly, I kindly invite you to consider asking the Lord the same that this leper asked the Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. If you feel that your mind is dirty, dirty, with all kinds of thoughts, evil thoughts, impure thoughts, thoughts that are not helping your life to move forward. If you feel yourself that you are like, that you are like a prisoner, and the prison you are within, you are in, the prison is the prison, prison of your thoughts. Well, you can say to the Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He reached out his hand. The Lord reach, reached out his hand and touched the man. And the Lord said, I am willing. I am willing. This is a beautiful translation. I am willing. In Spanish, the usual translation is just the word, quiero. I am willing. I like the English translation. Of, of course, this comes from the Greek. The original is in Greek. I am willing. And, and, and the, the reason I love this translation is because it feels like a continuous wish, a continuous purpose from Christ. I am willing. Sometimes in English we say, when you are ready, I'm ready. That's exactly what the Lord is saying this, saying here, if you are ready, if you are ready to receive the healing, I am ready to give you, to grant you, to grant you the healing that you need. I am willing. And whatever happened, the Lord said, be clean, be clean. And this was the result. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. The leprosy left him. If, if some sort of leprosy has power over you, this is the time to say to the Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And the Lord will answer, I am, I am willing. Be clean. Because you, are, you were not created to be dirty. Probably most of us repel the idea of being dirty. We don't like that. We love to, to feel that we are clean, clean and nice. Well, here you have your best ally, and his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus sent him away at once.
So now you are cleansed, but life continues. Life goes on. Life goes on. So this is not the final battle. Continue your life. Life goes on. What I would like to underline here is that the Lord cares. He cares about the body. He cares about how people are. Well, we said before, we said before that the world cares about healthy bodies and beautiful bodies. What does the Bible say about beautiful bodies, about beauty? Again, some people could think, well, beauty is out of the reach of the Bible because the Bible is very spiritual and the Bible is only for religious people. Don't so fast, don't so fast, please. Do not assume that so quickly. Look, beauty is very important in the Bible. It's very important. Again, let's go back to the first chapter of the Bible and in the book of Genesis you'll find that God created the human beings in his own image. In his own image. So there's, there's something of God's beauty in you. And part, part of the process of conversion is letting letting all that beauty, beauty to come out. There's beauty. There's beauty in you. Even before you go to the gym, before you put on your makeup, before that, there's beauty within you. And conversion, in some sense, is allowing, allowing that beauty to come out. Why is it so? Because sin, sin is preventing that beauty from coming out. It's preventing it. Sin, sin is not a beautiful thing. It's very ugly. How do you feel, for example, when somebody uh, lies to you? You don't feel good. That, that's ugly. And it's curious because we use words like ugly to refer to some actions that are not physical. For example, somebody committed treason against you or lied to you. And you say, that's an ugly person. Why? Why do we say ugly person or ugly action when it is not physical? Well, the reason is that in your inner self, you know that there's beauty in the human being. And when somebody from within does something that is wrong, you feel that that person is ugly within. It's ugly in the inside. We were made in the image of God. In the image of God. Think, think of your best smile. You're young, you're beautiful, you're handsome. Think of your most beautiful smile. I bet, I bet your most beautiful smile shows up when you feel loved. Am I right? Maybe I am. When you feel loved, your most beautiful, your most warm and kind and beautiful smile appears when you feel loved. 
Oh, that's only wonderful to hear. You know something? I love you. Oh, wow, that's great. And most probably, the most beautiful smile emerges, emerges at that point, at that time. Why is it so? Because God is love. Because God is love. And when love arrives, there is a great connection. There is a wonderful connection between the love you find on the outside and the love you feel from the inside. And that connection is what makes your smile so beautiful, so expressive, so memorable. The Bible cares about beauty. One of the books of the Bible is the Song of Songs. The Song of Songs. That's a curious name, isn't it? The Song of Songs. And what is the Song of Songs about? Well, obviously, obviously, Song of Songs is a way of telling the most beautiful song. The Song of Songs is like saying, this is the summit, the summit. This is the highest point in the songs. And you know something? In that particular book of the Bible, God is not mentioned. Not even once. Not even once in the Song of Songs. That's curious. God is not mentioned. And the Kingdom of God is not mentioned. And the Promised Land is not mentioned. And heaven is not mentioned either. Not mentioned. Why? What is this particular book about? Well, the Song of Songs is about love. And it's about a couple. This is a very handsome man and a very pretty woman. And they are expressing their own love in many different ways. And there are descriptions in the Song of Songs. Some of these descriptions sound very weird, weird in our ears. Why? Well, because we have another standards, different, different standards of beauty, and we use different expressions to say to somebody, you really are pretty, I like you. So there's a cultural, cultural distance between the writer of the Song of Songs and our own time. Of course, there's a difference and a distance. But what is clear is that in this book, all is about love and all is about beauty. And it is in the Bible. So the Bible cares about beauty. And in the book of Psalms, in Psalm number 45, you find expressions that ponder and praise the beauty of the king. You are the most handsome of all men. This expression is in Psalm 45. The Bible cares about beauty. So it's not opposed about people being healthy and people being beautiful. But now I have a surprise. And that surprise is that in the Bible, Besides, besides beauty and health, there are other goods that are desirable when we speak of the body. So the body is not only to be healthy and to be beautiful. The message of the world is about being healthy and being beautiful. But in the Bible, and in the practice and the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, you find that there is other aspects, there are other aspects about the human body. And I will mention three of them, and that will be 
the conclusion of this talk. Three, three aspects of the human body that appear very clearly in the Bible, are very applicable to our own lives, and are not usually mentioned in worldly talk. First, your body, your own body, has the capacity of giving a hand, helping others out, doing something for someone. We can go, for example, to chapter, we can go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew, this is good. Matthew chapter 25. It is very famous because it's the final judgment. What do we have here? This is Matthew chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, this is Jesus speaking. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd, shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And you know the, the story, the sheep are put on the right hand, the goats are put on the left hand. And what's the reason for that judgment? What's the criterion for that? Well, the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, that sounds good, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. The kingdom prepared for you. It sounds good. Why? For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. Hunger? That's in the body. I was hungry, and you gave something to eat. You gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. So you know, your body is the most powerful tool or instrument of mercy. To feed the hungry, the hungry. Also, to give something to drink to the thirsty. To look after the sick. You use your body for that. So your body is an instrument, is a means, means for mercy. Is there an age for this? Not really, not really. For example, think of visiting the sick. I know that the, this thing of the COVID-19 has been a disaster for many of us, for many among us, yes. And we have to be careful. But think, for example, of visiting the elderly. How much consolation, how much affection, how much joy you can bring to people, including your elderly relations. How much joy you can bring to them. When I was in Ireland, there was a group, it was not a religious group, 
Its name was Friends of the Elderly. And this was young people, more or less uh, of the same age you are now, and some of them will go to homes of elderly people. Of course, this was a very well-organized program. And they would go to the homes of elderly people. And you know, to do what? To do some good, like simple company and conversation. And this is bodily. And this is your body. I remember a young woman, he was from Uruguay. Uruguay, in the south of South America. And he spoke very well the English language, and he belonged to the friends of the elderly. And she would go to homes of elderly people to spend time with them. It was like a couple of hours or something like that. A couple of hours. Is it much to ask from you? A couple of hours. But those two hours really, really made a difference in the life of very, very lonely people. And that's bodily. Your body is not only to be healthy and to be beautiful, which is not bad. Your body is not only to be healthy and beautiful. You can do works of mercy. I know that some of you or many of you know about this. So this tells the Bible, don't spend all your time just in yourself. Please keep apart, save some time, some time to give to other people, spend some time to other people, handicapped people, people with different abilities, people with special difficulties in learning. Experience that, and I'm sure you'll feel something really great within you, because you were made to serve and to love. When we begin to give to others, and you need your body for that, when, you be, when we begin to give to others joy and consolation and hope and purpose began growing up, begin growing up from within you. So the body is also for that for being a tool, for being an instrument, to, for being a means for mercy. Many people do that, many people. I remember in one of my missions, I was going to Central America, and don't remember Honduras or Guatemala, and the guy that was seated at my right hand was a missionary. He was not a Catholic missionary. He was, I don't remember, evangelical, Pentecostal, something like that. And I told him, I'm a Catholic priest, and he was very happy with that. And he also told me, he, he also told me, well, I, I'm a missionary. And he was like 20 years old or 19 years old, and he was a missionary. Belonging to the evangelicals, I think. So I asked him very politely, well, what's your, what's your mission? What's your mission about? And he tells me, I'm going to some particular very poor neighborhood over here, and for one year, we are helping them out with some services of health and, uh, and nourishment and things like that. He spent one year serving people without a body, that's not possible. So your body is an instrument for mercy. Think about that. And think, but because probably you can do some voluntary work. And believe me, you'll find new joy in doing voluntary work for other people. You have the capacity, you have the health. And let me tell you a secret. A secret. People in need will not care very much about 
whether you are very beautiful or not so much beautiful. That's not a problem for them. What they need is company, presence, an attentive ear. That's what they need. That's what they need. That's what they hope to have. So the Bible tells us that we can use our bodies as instruments of mercy. Secondly, your body is also an instrument of prayer. Yeah, prayer. The founder of my community, I belong to the Dominicans. Our official name is Order of Preachers, the Dominicans. And our founder was Saint Dominic, Saint Dominic of Guzman. And our founder, founder is remembered because the way he prayed, the way he connected with God, with all his body, you saw, well, you listened the passage of uh, the Bible from Mark chapter 1. This le leper fell to his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. He fell to his knees. That's the image of prayer. You can use your body to pray, to pray in different ways. And again, this is something that I learned very much in the charismatic renewal. Use, do use your smile when speaking to God and lift your sight and raise your arms and sing and sing. Use your lungs and your voice to proclaim the greatness of the Lord. That's bodily, that's physical, and that's great. Final point. Your body is a temple. It's a temple. To find the sense and purpose of the buildings, like churches, I do encourage you, begin by finding the reason of being a temple. You're a temple. Apostle St. Paul tells us, your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. So we were not made, we were not made for impurity or fornication or pornography or things like that. We were not made for that. We are temples. Think of this. If you don't like your body being treated like a toy, don't treat anybody's body, anyone's body, like a toy. And that's the, the sad part, and that's the dirty part of pornography and the like. It's like trying human bodies for entertainment, just for enjoyment, like toys. Your body is not a toy. Let me remind you, you're precious. You're precious. Your body is precious. And each one of us bodies is precious. So, we have to have self, self, dominion and to take distance from all that. That's not part of your faith. That's not good for you. That's not what you have, the great body that you have. So step by step, if probably you feel a bit dirty, dirty because of that, okay, you know that there is a way out of that. Think of that, repent, do a good confession, and begin a new life. New life. You were not made for dirtiness or things like that. You were made to be, to be a saint, actually. <laughs> you were made to be happy and grateful 
and a powerful expression of God's love for other people. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.